Rain up, please. Go south. Filming so, so, so hard. The hours, the, the being in the sunshine, is, it's really, really, I mean, people don't realise just how hard it is. No, it, no, really, I mean, it's, it's not really very difficult at all being in the sunshine in the south of France, to be honest. It's fun. One of the primary motivations why Simon McBurney set the story in France was because we wanted to put Mr Bean in an environment where talk was not expected because we decided to send him to France with no real knowledge of French and so inevitably the way that he dealt with every situation he would have to deal with in a relatively silent way. Gracias. My father had a, an uncle called Uncle Bob who was incredibly British and he used to uh, say to my father, ah, it's very easy to, incredibly easy to travel in Europe, in fact I've travelled the whole way around Europe. I've had no trouble with language in any of these countries because I had the one essential word in French, gracias. We had three main bases. We had one in Paris and shot in Paris and around Paris. And then we were in uh, Lubron and shot in and around there. And then we were in Nice and, and shot all around there. And interestingly, actually, we had a 50-50 Anglo-French crew and it was completely harmonious. And I think they had, a, they had a great time making it. When we went to the Arc de Triomphe, and when there was a, a bus coming along, and we heard these, the Chinese people open the windows, and they were like, Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean. All over the place, this is Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean, or Monsieur Bean. The key to it was seeing Bean sort of, you know, interact with um, a culture which is not his own. Very often in the TV, pieces he would be put into an unfamiliar situation now he's in an unfamiliar country it's the road movie aspect of it has been slightly tricky to manage but when instead of having to supplement with stunt people you know he does his own stuff so we did manage to go straight up the avenue Charles de Gaulle which was a bit like kind of being there shot as he approached the Arc de Triomphe we weren't allowed to go straight across the uh, road leading up to the Arc de Triomphe because they said it would incite other people to do the same thing. When I whinge about the work and the responsibility of, of filming this movie, you know, and then you say that your three locations are Paris, Provence and the, and the Côte d'Azur, then people, you know, tend to be uh, cynical. But I'm, I'm afraid no matter how beautiful the scenery or, or lovely the weather, it's, you know, the business of making a movie, I think, is tricky. It's really hot. But I don't have to complain because Bean has a real suit, really hot all the time, even on the beach, he's going to wear his suit. So I don't have to complain because I'm lucky, you see I have my little green dress. Actually I found it surprisingly bearable. Almost the biggest problem was keeping the sun off my skin. We wanted Mr Bean to have a slightly pasty look throughout it. So almost the biggest problem I had was I had to hold an umbrella and keep the sun off me at all times. Here we are in a place called Cavillon home of the melon and uh, this station we call St Cavo for the film. Um, we're in a real station so there's lots of trains that go by all day long which is fun when we're shooting. And this is the point where um, Stepan and Bean forge a reluctant bond if you like. When two people are sat on a bench and they don't uh, talk to each other and you have to convey a story, uh, it is a much more time-consuming and money-consuming exercise. Visual comedy is very hard to achieve simply because every gesture and every piece of movement has to feel organic, fluid, considered with the added requirement of being funny. And in the past, where you saw people like Chaplin and Keaton do silent comedy, they would do hundreds and hundreds of takes of, of their routines. And in fact, although we, we do spend quite a lot of time doing it, it's probably quite rapid in comparison. Uh, action! France is a very, very big country with a relatively small population for its landmass, and, and there are many, many big and spectacular and beautiful uh, vistas which we have tried to capture. Some extraordinary constructions, some extraordinary architecture, some great landscapes. Landscapes in particular I think we've been, we've been trying to capitalise on because there is something inherently funny about this small figure of Mr Bean set in this vast context. Scale was something we wanted to embrace for the, for the film so that it had that sort of that size and one of the things you do see is being in space and I, I think that's very strong I mean because Rowan is such a good physical performer 
I think that's something that is very strong in the film, that you see his full figure within a larger context. I think in cinema, when you're blessed with a big landscape, um, to have a little figure being funny in a big space, you know, gives, a, gives your film um, the scale it, it should have. When you're backed with this beautiful Provencal landscape and the sun shining, and there's great scope for you to place your figure in such a way that you can exploit this huge space. Here we are in Cavillon again. We were at the railway station. Now this is doubling for um, a town in southern France where um, Bean goes into um, various music cues that come via the music stall over there. And there's no money received by Bean for all his efforts dancing to all these tunes. And, um, and then Puccini comes on, Babino Caro, and uh, money just flies into the handkerchief. The best thing I like about filming is just to be on the camera. It's just really great to see the camera. Bang on the money. Wow! John! John, <laughs> take five. It wasn't particularly inspired by one of the French comedian Jack Tatty's most famous movies called um, A Monsieur Hulot's Holiday. Um, because in many ways the essence of, of, of Monsieur Hulot's Holiday was that he was travelling for five minutes and was on the beach for an hour and a half in terms of the film's running time, whereas, you know, we travel for an hour and a half and then we're on the beach for five minutes. So it's, uh, I think it's an inverse of that film, if it's anything. There's a tatty homage in my mind in the cycling moment where Bean overtakes the peloton and, uh, and he's cycling up and then, then you go to cut to the wide shot and he's down like that. And for me, that's very reminiscent of that, uh, um, the tatty film where he plays the postman, you know, um, the jour de fête. What we're doing today is a uh, chase sequence involving um, Mr. Bean and a chicken. Unfortunately, the chicken has been put on a, on a chicken truck and Bean snabs someone's bike and pedals after it. And um, the reason you see uh, all of this paraphernalia behind me is because we have to do certain shots which involve um, Bean catching a lift on a, on a Jeep. To, to make him go a bit faster so he can actually catch up with the, um, the chicken truck. And so all of, these, um, all of these rigs you see are here purely for fractional moments of, of action, i.e. catching hold of the Jeep. The Jeep brakes, we see Bean lurch forward, and um, it only takes us three or four days to achieve the 30 seconds we need. I lived in France for a long time, so the France that I felt should be portrayed was a very modern France. France, which is, you know, it has very slick trains, you know, it's extremely urbanised. One of the things that we talked about a lot was the idea that Bean might have a rather cliched idea of what France consisted of, which perhaps he sees in, in the, for the first time, he sees in the, in the, in the commercial. What are we doing here? In the middle of Provence, in this beautiful place, where we're currently finding Bean waking up in a hay cart and um, he sees this beatific Provencal scene not unlike a Man on the Source movie he's amazed and suddenly out of nowhere comes a tank and several Nazis Iped is the moment where Bean wakes up and realises that he's in France as he imagined it to be which is a romantic English notion of France and it turns out to be a 1940s film set so uh, we've found a rather beautiful village and uh, built a cafe down one side of what was a three-sided square so that the tank can roll in and blow the front off it. Where's my explosion? Blowing up a building means you have to make sure no one else gets blown up. And so all the old people that are there playing accordions and drinking pastis had to be replaced by young fit men that could take a few hits for some material. So when they crouch down, it's a lot of young fit stun men. When they come back up again, they're old and beautiful. You play with your life, huh? The piece that we blow up is, is made of totally soft material. So that bit has to be inserted and it's, just the, it's made of cork and plaster without any, uh, without any binding so it doesn't form chips and all the timber is balsa. Uh, and then it's, it's treated pretty much in the ordinary way. And then the effects guys hit it with a charge and a huge woof of air, which gives it the effect of being blown to smithereens. Bean has a video camera 
and part of the narrative of the film is told through the images that Bean takes on his video camera. Then there's our main film, which we're seeing the whole thing through, and the two things meet at the end in a cinematic festival, which takes place in, in Cannes. And we shot second unit during the festival and um, grabbed some stuff on the red carpet. Um, and the Cannes authorities were very graceful in allowing us to do that. Cannes is really like, there's so many people come here on holidays, so there's always a lot of people. During the festival, it's like 100% more, but there's always a lot of people. It's always sunny, the sea is always here, <laughs> it's beautiful. And yeah, no, it's cool to be here. It was a very hectic schedule, it was a very hectic bit of shooting, but I think the results are good. I think, I think it's a very nice film to watch. I think, it, I think it's, it's very beautiful. I'm very glad that we've made a pure version of it, you know, because I think that the character warranted it. And in a funny way, the first film, although it had great merits and all the rest of it, didn't, didn't give it the purity that the character deserved. Oh.